Rossi, welcome back to Closed Lines and Headlines. What's up, dude? Not much, dude. Good to be back. Got some stuff to talk about for sure. Yeah, beautiful weather here in Massachusetts. We had ray, rather scattered showers throughout the day yesterday. And here we are on a bright, sunny Sunday morning, ready to talk some WWE, AEW, Money in the Bank before we start our day. Yeah, man, there's there's enough going on that, that it's worthy of us talking about it for sure. For sure. And let's start with the men's Money in the Bank ladder match. We have Ricochet. We have Shinsuke Nakamura, L.A. Knight, Santos Escobar, Butch from the Bushwhackers, and we have either Matt Riddle or Damian Priest in a qualifying match tomorrow. Gun to your head, who is winning that match right now? Uh, I feel like it's got to be Knight. Um, okay. Just because like Priest just had a title shot and lost, if so Finn's involved in that, I mean... He's who I feel like is going to win between him and Riddle. Um, that would probably be the only two I could really see winning it is whoever wins that Riddle Priest match and uh, Knight. What do you think? You know, before I before I say anything, I just realized that outside of Ricochet, who was in a thrown together tag team match, which was awesome by the way, at WrestleMania, all these seven guys did not have a match at WrestleMania, and that's kind of interesting in a way. That's just yeah, like, all right, it is. We got Riddle returning. We had Nakamura returning. Butch was a second. Ricochet was in a thrown together match. LA Knight was left off the card, even though he should have got, got on the card. And then Santos was in the middle of all the LWO, Dom Ray stuff. So interesting, interesting outlook. You know, these are all kind of Triple H guys in past in NXT for, for sure. Um, he showed an interest in all of them. It feels like Bush and Butch and Santos are guys that aren't necessarily going to win, but could be elevated from being in the discussion of this match and thrown in there for the spotlight. Knight and Riddle, like you mentioned, would probably be my favorites. But honestly, I'm not even sure if Riddle is going to make the match. You know, if you look at this match, it's all smaller guys. Oh, you know, Knight's a, a big beefy base, but you figure they would need a guy like Damian Priest in there to catch everyone and make sure everything is flowing and going so i don't know it's it's an interesting match it's a lot of freshness there's there's uh lacks a little star power that's why i think that perhaps maybe riddle over damien even though damien's on the ascend for sure but i don't know i think it's riddle i think it's riddle and here's my quick scenario you know they've been hunt they've been teasing the gunther riddle feud to get kicked off and either riddle goes in there and cashes it in on a surprise before the honky talks um ic title record is broken or he turns heel and you know cashes in on seth at an opportune time and whatever he got going on is there those are the only two lanes i can see i don't see him as a conquering baby face challenging seth and defeating him perhaps um gunther but i don't know maybe after I think the I think the the surprise is doing it before the record is broken. Is it cool for Gunther to break the Honky Tonks record? Of course, but he doesn't really necessarily need it. Yeah, and the, and the other thing that I'm thinking about too is Drew McIntyre. Like, does he find his way into this match? Um, if he's healthy, which it sounds like he is, he's got to be involved in the show in some way. And I actually like the idea of him winning the briefcase if he finds his way into this, whether there's an injury or something like Ricochet. I got my eye yep. on for that. Here he wasn't even mentioned last year. Yeah. So, and then with that, you know, he wins that briefcase. All eyes will think he's going to cash in on Roman at some point, and then he can cash in turn heel on Rollins sometime in the next, you know, a couple months. So, um, I, he's someone that I, I kind of have my eye on as finding a way into this, kind of like how Theory did last year. That's cute. And that's and that would be a mix of star power and base that we mentioned with Priest and Riddle that were kind of needed. He is meshed together in all of that. Now, the two guys we didn't mention here were are kind of a little dark horsey. You know, it, it'd be Nakamura. They finally go with him. You know, Triple H presents him on Raw for the first time ever, really. He's never really been on Monday Night Raw. And they could present him as that guy to go for Seth. Or perhaps we get evil Nakamura, but he would really need to kind of win that if that if that was going to be a thing or ricochet quick question could ricochet work as a heel uh yeah i mean very i don't know <laughs> he while he can i don't think at like a world title level if he had like a teeny wincy 
sliver of Ricky Starks in him, perhaps. You know what I mean? Like, does he have that like cocky, arrogant, like too cool for school vibes? Because he's got. I don't know. I don't want to say he doesn't have it. He has it on the surface, but he doesn't really have it as a baby face. Not really now. But my question to you is if they went with Ricochet, could he work as a heel? I mean, I guess with how hot as Rollins is, anybody can really turn a heel um, with that cash in. Right. Yeah. Um, and, you know, cocky, best athlete around, something like that. Yeah. He could probably make it work. I mean, I feel like anybody can be a baby face. If could he be I mean, like a heel. Friend? Could he be like an he awesome could. type of heel? You know, that that tone of like cockiness, like I'm just better than you in ring. I'm sick. I've, I'm distracted catering to the fans. I'm distracted for going to the bigs moves. And just get like that really grounded level fucking heel. Can he do it? I yeah. think he needs help. It's not like it's, there's a could. manager out there, but is there like, I don't know, fucking, is there like, God, fucking Robert Stone or something that could go in there and focus him there? I don't know. Is there? And like, like, Unless there was like uh like I'm thinking about, yeah, I'm thinking about what could happen with Judgment Day too, because obviously there's dissension there with Priest and Finn, and, uh, Finn, right? So you know that could be. I still accept expect JD McDonough to end up in there, but yeah. you know Dark and Ricochet up, maybe throw them in with them. Um, that that would probably be the best route if it was to happen. Um, just like some sort of heel group, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think I think him alone with like a manager, like I don't know who I really I really don't. And he and he gets like a heater, like a Dabakato, not Dabakato, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, something like yeah. that. Something something to kind of Bronson sweep. Reed would be good for that. Yeah, and, but uh, it's weird how they kind of just kind of yeah have that mini feud though. But that's the I men's know. money in the bank. I, I'm a with you. I think it's night. I think it should be night. If I don't think if it's it should be Riddle if it's not Knight, in my opinion. Nakamura, Nakamura in um, Ricochet would be that next tier down. Uh, Priest would probably be in between that tier of Riddle in LA and Nakamura in Ricochet. Priest would be in the middle if he made that. And then I think Santos and Butch are the lower tier with Santos above him. Um, it's kind of where I'm at with it. I think that it's an interesting field, not a lot of star power, but a lot of could be projects. Let's put it that way. And a lot of triple H guys. Yeah. I agree. So it's interesting. We'll see how that lands at the end of the month. And then on the women's side here, we have Zelina Vega, Becky Lynch, Zoe Starks, Bailey, EO Sky, and to be determined to be determined. We don't know where that lands now. Maybe Chelsea Green or something, but she so she just feels like she would get hurt in that match. I'm not sure who the TB, to TBA is, but perhaps the TBA could be the winner. And I don't know unless if they want to go down like the damage control route where uh, EO Sky is about to win, and then that's where Bailey turns heel and steals the briefcase, or Bailey, or EO Sky gets the briefcase, and that just starts to add dissension to that those two. Because for now, it's kind of like the assumption the dissension between them is kind of gone away in a way they're kind of getting along get going along and it's just kind of like feels like they're there as a on a holding pattern and this match could be a catalyst for them and i think either one of those would really be the favorite i'm not sure if becky lynch needs it or i'm not sure if she wouldn't be screwed out of it you know on paper she should be the favorite you know from a kayfabe state standpoint and then we got zoe starks it would be interested if she gets it but i'm not sure if she's ready or needed and then zelina is kind of in the same territory as santos yeah, if, if they went with her, it'd be fine. But I don't really see much upside there. Unless if they were like, I don't know. I don't know. getting Bringing in another Latino girl and they started a tag team and then they like tag, cashed into the tag belts and won them. I don't, I really don't know. I don't know the lane for Zelina. I don't see her as a world champion right now. Yeah. The, I mean, I'm thinking another spot here where, you know, base like a Raquel might, might be good for the sixth spot. Yep. Um, because there is like. Yeah, Zelina's a, small, yeah. EO's small, so I think she might fit in well here. And somebody, and she's also somebody that could win it too if she's in yeah. it. Um, her and Rhea could be a big money feud down the road. Um, I mean, when you look at the names that are in there, you've got to isolate the EO Bailey connection or the Becky as the only three that could really win. Mm -hmm. Um, EO seeming like the one that makes the most sense, and then we can finally yeah. get the Oscar match. But the thing that, because she could probably, as like a babyface turn, like do the honorable thing and call her spot, right? 
Um, plus, there's been talk, too, of there being, like, a Japan WWE show somewhere down the road. Um, if that was to happen, you know, that's the fucking perfect match to put on that show, right? But, like, the Charlotte of it all, exactly. The Charlotte of it all is really what threw me for a loop. Like, her coming back early, or at this point, kind of surprised me. I think it's going to facilitate a Bianca heel turn from the looks of it. Mm -hmm. But it's really tough for me to envision a fourth woman jumping into that title program anytime soon. Um, Because Charlotte Bianca, you probably, I don't know if they're going to rush that into something at SummerSlam. Um, if Oscar's going to be transitional, what the deal is there? It's just kind of a weird spot. It probably ends up being a triple threat at some point. Yeah. So you could save the Charlotte Bianca singles match for like a mania down the road. But um, it, it almost the more I think about it with that, it almost feels like it's got to be something that's going to cash in with Raw. But, you know, we fully expect the men's winner to cash in on Raw too. So we might get a surprise. Um, EO being the one that probably makes the most sense as far as the SmackDown side of things. But, you know, I really do have my eye on somebody like a Raquel to steal it out of that six spot. Yeah, I'm going EO. I think after we talked it out, and especially listening to you, I think EO is the pick. Unless if they go with Raquel. I think that we have, real quick, Mike, let's go. Zelina SmackDown, Bailey SmackDown, EO SmackDown. That's correct? Yeah. And then Becky and Zoe are Raw. So you assume that a Raw third will be added here i don't think that's necessarily has to be the case but just based off how they did it before you think that makes sense so and I, 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 to it. yeah she was drafted to raw so. because then that can kind of eliminate all three of them together right so yeah. then it would kind of leave the three smackdown girls i'm going i'm going eo uh and then with a dark horse i would go bailey just to kind of just so she kind of screwed yeah her. Yeah. I think that that makes the most sense. You know, EO has it won. Bailey knocks her over, goes and wins it, something like that. Um, or just EO wins it, and then yeah. Bailey's pissed off. Let's just put it this way. This is how I feel on it. Bailey would need the briefcase to be relevant in the title discussion. EO doesn't, but it would no. help. You know, it would help her as that conquering baby face who wants to call out Asuka at said date, and then it would add dissension and jealousy. To between the dynamic between her and Bailey, which they should go to a split. So, yeah. Uh, what else? What other matches do you see falling a line on this card before we get to the bloodline? Do we see Cody Dominic? And if so, I think that's a great idea, man. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think I think, I think that probably think that, is that it works. That's a perfect person for a Cody to have a match with because then he can yeah. say like, you know, with with Dom being a chicken shit, you can really play off the broken arm thing with that, and it would work. And it's a good spot for Dom to be elevated into a big match, right, on a pay-per-view. Oh, yeah. um, Gunther, being in the UK, I feel like he should have a match because he's super over there mm-hmm. from his progress days. Um, I mean, and that's where Riddle, uh, I'm thinking Riddle. him and Riddle yeah. ends up happening because if not Riddle, who else? Um, and then, Hello, maybe uh, you're I don't know. Yeah, and then obviously whatever comes of this Bianca-Charlotte situation. Now, they're doing the title match in the UK the Friday before. Uh, so they might just keep this off the show altogether and put the shine on the other women. Um, but you know, you got to figure there'll be a second woman's match, whether it's maybe Rhea defending against somebody. Um, I don't really know who's next who on Raw for that, who's... right? Um, yeah, who can maybe Sonya, but, or something. yeah, and then maybe maybe Imperium against uh KO and Sammy. They've kind of been teasing, yeah, that. Gonna... they did it once, but I mean, they could do it again. Unless if they go in KO and Sammy versus the winner on the SmackDown match that we're going to get next week. Um, yeah. Like I think street it's profits that? Pretty, like that. pretty deadly street profits, brawling brutes, uh, Ridge and Sheamus being Ridge and Sheamus and yeah. not Butch. Perhaps that's a foresight. And the fourth team was. Was somebody that, Oh, um, LWO. The LWO guys, Cruz and wild. So. Brawling Brutes versus KO and Sammy. That'd be kind of a banger in the to do. U- in the UK, in the UK, too, yeah. in the UK. So, or maybe they get weird, not weird, but they do a KO and Sammy versus a Raw team, Imperium, a SmackDown team, Brawling Brutes. And that's maybe what they do on pay-per-views for now until yeah. they split the titles away. So, I don't know. Uh, looks good. But now let's talk about the main event, the Bloodline. 2.91 viewers for that final segment on last week's Roman J um, thousand day scenario or celebration. 
big numbers, boy. That's for modern day. That's that's a pretty pretty big number. I believe it's the biggest fourteen or eighteen to what is it forty five whatever number they did in a long time. Um, just cool stuff, and I thought it was compelling. I was on the edge of my seat when he when Jimmy Pie faced him. I said, "Oh shit!" Like fuck, that's like I got like damn. That's that's good shit right there. You know what I mean? And then you get the the saga with Jay. All this say all this considered, Mike. Where do you think we li- fall for the bloodline and the Usos? At do we think we get Jimmy versus Roman? I think we get. We get I think we get Jimmy versus Roman with Jay as the ref. Um, oh. that, that's kind of the the way I see it. Um, I think you're really gonna play off. Um, you know, Jay. I, I what I really liked about this past Friday was Jay throwing it in Heyman's face that if I'm in the bloodline, you're not. Mm-hmm. Um, so that kind of puts it on Roman out of the side between Jay and um, and Heyman. Now, I like that idea because it's kind of Roman trusting Jay and they're continuing to like try to feed off of him being the next tribal chief story. Um, and then you can always, they always have Solo that Jack could take him out if need be, right? So um, I, I like that as an idea and kind of a, it's a good next step in the story. Um the end of the day, you know, Jay gets taken out and a real ref runs in. And then I don't know. I mean, ultimately I think Jay and Roman might be the SummerSlam match. Uh, so, you know, do him and Jimmy tag? now. What do we got to tag? I think the, I think the tag yeah. is interesting. I just, it's weird because I mean, he hasn't defended the title since Mania. Like I Man, know that they're cool. trying to just extend the run, but um, yeah, I mean, maybe they do the, maybe they do the tag and money in the bank, but I don't know. I feel like they're going to need to, Make make Roman vulnerable with a new Money in the Bank running around. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yep. So. Oh, and Rollins is Rollins faced Finn. We didn't talk that's, about that. I was just gonna say that at the end. We didn't we didn't mention Rollins versus Finn, but we perceived that to happen too, which is fine. Rollins isn't in danger of losing. Finn in his native country. I know it's not Ireland, but whatever. Uh, yeah. Should be should be a good match. Just really doesn't really have much pizzazz from a marquee standpoint. But. I don't know. I I think they might go the tag, um, but I think we they get both the make sense. Yeah, they both make sense. It's just what, what way they want to tell it. But you, the way you say they haven't defended the belt since WrestleMania, it's just like they haven't. You got to kind of defend it. But yeah, it's it's just more story based, and you think that the, the tag would lead to more story based, and then maybe the follow is where we get the match. But. I but yeah, I'm very that's... interested with that Jay Heyman side. I thought that was a really cool thing. Like the yeah. SmackDown story seemed kind of blah, but then when he said that, um, and he played babyface in the match too. So there's going to be some sort of Jay swerve coming soon. That um, and I mean honestly, stuff we haven't seen coming. <laughs> you know, the the Jimmy stuff we didn't expect Jimmy to do the turn. So they've really done a good job at keeping us guessing. Yeah, we're over here not knowing what's coming up, and we know what's coming up. So we, we that's that's a good way. We don't know which direct. We know it's coming. We just don't know which which direction it's going to veer off to. So kudos, interesting stuff. It definitely keeps continuing to be the best thing, thing on WWE TV and any wrestling company TV. That's for sure. Yeah. But speaking of other wrestling companies, CM Punk, he is back in AEW. He'll be on the Collision, I believe, two weeks from yesterday is when Collision kicks off. His native city of Chicago. Illinois. So I guess tickets have moved a little bit there with his announcement, but outside of that in Western Canada, it hasn't really moved much. So is CM, how is this collision thing on Saturday night going to go? Is it, it's going to be like a first week success and then it's just going to fade out or. I don't don't see how it does great, but I mean, it all depends. They're going to need a money story, right? So I've been thinking about this. We talked about it a little bit offline too. Like, What's their big hook on that first show? Like, obviously, they're stacking Dynamite next week to try to get as many viewers as possible for Saturday. They have to do a huge angle to Mm -hmm. to keep people hooked in, especially if that's going to be, like, the Punk exclusive show. Like, some things that have bounced around, like, does Punk actually flip and join Bull Club Gold? Um, Turning on FTR, that's that's kind of a cute thing to do, and it's a huge story. It could Mm -hmm. be a way to sell Punk Bull Club shirts. It could be a way to, you know, kind of have that NWO feel. Um, and mm-hmm. then ultimately he can say to the elite, Hey, I fucking stole your gimmick. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm doing it better than you ever did. Um, stuff like that is kind of cute. Um, yeah. the match just doesn't seem to make sense on paper because it was a Stark feud that they just kind of inserted punk into. And then they inserted Joe into it. It's almost like they wanted to do Joe and punk, but they didn't want to make them do a singles match in night one. 
It's, um, it's just, interesting. Hmm. I, I just basically, I expect a big angle to come out of this one way or the other. Here's my thing with the whole AEW punk and all. It's just so internet catered, like, but us fucking dumb marks know, how do you not do fucking CM Punk versus the elite? Like, how, like you, you're going to protect, you're going to drop breadcrumbs and be like, yeah, see a punk. Everyone knew he's coming back. And then, you know, he's good friends with FTR and you know, we're going to, we will release that he he's interested in Jay white. So we're just going to, and then he wants to feud with Joe. So it's just, there's no story. There's no substance. They present this match, but you, you want to like drop all these breadcrumbs on the internet, but on the internet, it's like, we, you want to be real. You want to do anything, make fucking money, do the elite versus punk. How do you ignore that? How do you like, I get it. NDAs and whatever, all that bullshit. And just like grow a sack, make some noise, make some money and fucking go with it. Like you guys are, you guys are just not in, like, there's no buzz. There's no fizzle. There's no nothing. It's just, I yeah, don't know. end of the day, it's watered down be, bullshit. Just fucking go with it. Yeah. End of the day, punk should be a heel from day one. I understand they're in Chicago. So he's going to get that huge pop, but, you know, he he, they, yeah, that, but it doesn't matter. Like he's just the crowds. He's gonna have lukewarm responses. They're not in Chicago every week. Um, if, if they do that thing when he's like a baby face at home, he's a heel everywhere else. That's the best way to go. Um, and he, Bret Hart is his inspiration, so it all makes sense. Um, ultimately, I don't know how you can present this guy as a baby face for long. Um, the crowds are gonna fucking give him the John Cena treatment everywhere he goes. So you should just lean into the heel side, and he's fucking better as a heel. So. I know, um, but like, I hope I hope they do that uh, soon. He's not they're not he's not even drawing outside of Chicago so far. And I understand that I guess with these western are going to do, do a lot of Owen Cup stuff. That's why they're in western Canada the whole time. That's my presumption, right? It's all Owen yeah. Cup. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be. He's which those shows are selling like shit. And here's the other thing too is um you know, I know I'm the indie guy, but that I just read that like six different guys got pulled off indie shows next Saturday to be at the coll the collision and they're all like ROH guys um canada when the once they start doing canada these guys whole weekends are shot because they gotta fly friday show saturday and then you're not leaving canada to get to california or wherever for sunday so um a lot of these indie guys are going to be in trouble with their indie bookings especially if they keep doing roh on saturdays you know all right well let's let's talk about that we got the rest of aew we got the forbidden door coming up here three match or two matches announced or heavily rumored osprey omega two Coming off of the Russell Kingdom match back in January, this is the second one. Is it is it, is it announced, Mike, or is it just rumly hovered rumly? No, it is. Those two are announced. So it's announced for the NJPW US title. Yes. Okay, and the second one being Okada versus Daniel Bryan. Which one do you think will be the main event? I think Okada Osprey just because for the title. Um, well, hold on, you said two different names. Which one? You said all kid. You can't. You say okay, I'm sorry, Osprey, Osprey Omega. I'm sorry. Yeah. I think because it's for the title, and I feel like there's going to be a lot of storyline movement there with maybe Takeshita and and Callus looping in with Will Osprey. Okay, maybe we get a little angle coming out of that as Callus alludes to his family a lot. So maybe because Osprey's got to win, right? Oh yeah, um, well, he lost the first one, so it just makes sense, especially if they want to have that third big one wherever. If it's you know at all in. If it's wherever they need to, they need Omega needs to lose, which kind of adds a little eh, whatever to the to the match, but it's still going to be out, go out there and probably still be great. Yeah, absolutely. All right, anything we don't really talk AEW a lot, so uh, that was fun. I wasn't completely bitching the whole time, and I I like <laughs> AEW. It's just like just go with it. Just stop. Like, why is everything watered down? Why is it? Everything... Yeah. M MJF, like that's the perfect instance. You get MJF versus Adam Cole. It's like. That's really good on paper, you know. But Adam Cole is just – what is Adam he, Cole now? He yeah, I hated the Jericho have that feud. It he had in the Indies, and he definitely doesn't have that it that he had in NXT with a big fish in a small pond. But he should still have that sizzle here. What is it? It, it just feels like – he just doesn't – what is he missing? Like, what is it? Yeah, he just – I don't know. I feel like it's just – he's a better heel than a baby. I, I think him as a baby just hasn't really clicked. Like, he's the – he should be the heel that gets baby face pops because they then just be a dickhead, right? Um, but I understand him and Max is probably a money feud. I just didn't I don't love the the w, the frequent WWE mentioning. It just kind oh of God. waters it down. And then they're, they're saying, Oh, steroid Max, why even bring that up? Yeah, why you want to out your world champion as a steroid user? Like it doesn't make any fucking sense. 
that's just, which everybody just, knows he is, but but still, it's something you don't talk about on TV. It's why, too it's too inside. Why are we? This is just it just screams Vince Russo TNA shooty shoot shoot can bullshit. You know, it's yeah. just, what are we doing? That's yeah. that's on paper that's great. It's just I don't know. Whatever the only thing that I'm consistently in for in AEW is whatever Daniel Bryan is on my screen. Or Brian Daniels. Yeah, BCC in screen. general. I'm all over that. I love every segment there. And him, it's just his, his, just his. Him his and commentary has been amazing. His whole demeanor just. And I like how he's he's amazing. holding his bullets in, so he stays healthy for these big matches because there's a lot yeah. of them. Um, so yeah, good stuff. But all right, Mike, that's it for this week's of clotheslines and headlines. Uh, you nervous that uh, the draft is going to steal all your huskies? Are you guys revamping pretty good? No. I'm happy where we revamped. We got a huge transfer from Rutgers, um, who was their leading scorer last year. He's going to be in the Hawkins role. Um, plays defense too, and we've got five, you know, really good kids coming in freshmen. So um, it's going to be, you know, obviously not as explosive a start as last year, but I think they're going to be pretty fucking good. All right, we'll see. We got our big man from Mississippi State. Who knows if he's any good? Yeah. Six ten, and that's well, that's much needed in in the Friar Town. So. The conference is stacked, so who knows. Our out of conference is nuts, so it's going to be a, a fun year. Big East, Beast East, more like it, buddy. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Mike. One last time, let's give a touching tribute to the Iron Sheik, buddy. If you haven't checked it out, thank you, Steve Bennett, and thank you, Keithy Langston, for jumping out with me and giving twenty minutes of Iron Sheik stories. They crushed it. But anyways, rest in peace, Sheiky baby. It was a good man. <laughs>